Hey my friends, today I am out at Paradise Grove to connect in with thyme. Now this is one of the most famous herbs of all time. This is a culinary herb that you probably know of. It's probably in your kitchen right now, but it's also got a lot of medicinal benefits. It's been used throughout the years by many different cultures and has just a really rich history. So anyway, we're going to explore this plant and go and connect in with the thyme machine. So join me in learning more about Thymus vulgaris. herbs that needs no introduction. It is in every spice cabinet, many recipes. It's been used all over the world and has become a really traditional fundamental spice. Now of course it's a Mediterranean spice and it's part of that history of the longevity herbs that really help keep a healthy life. But because of that, it's been cultivated all over the world. And you'll see it in many French cuisine, in East African cuisine, in Middle Eastern cuisine, and in all the different Mediterranean cuisines. As you can see here at the Time Machine, we've got so many varieties. And part of the reason I wanted to do this video here is because this is just one of the most beautiful displays of thyme that I've ever seen. Despite the difference in look, all of these are thymus vulgaris. They are all the same species. They've just been cultivated in different ways to bring out different accents and from different parts of the world. Really, this is one of the species in the mint family, the Laminacea family. And every one of these plants in this family are edible, at least in this part of the world, and each one of them has some form of medicinal property. Typically they work with the digestive system, they also work with the nervous system, and many of them have an affinity to be antioxidant and really antiseptic. Really where thyme shines is its capacity to support more of a spicy, stimulant, and pungent kind of state. It works for things where there's constricted, tissue states where there is some depression or some kind of like funk that needs moving. Time helps move that kind of funk. That's one of the best benefits of this plant and that we'll see has a real panacea effect all throughout the body in how it can be used as medicine. What gives thyme much of its medicinal value is its suite of essential oils. These are mostly monoterpenes. These are a group of chemicals that are antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. The most famous of them is thymol, which is in all kinds of different recipes and is in many different ingredients. The other ones are things like geraniol and carvacrol and other ones like this. These have anti-mutagenic qualities and in fact enhance the anti-aging process. They are good for cellular repair, for DNA repair, for helping with blood clotting, for digestion, for parasites for so many of these kinds of medicines. They are in fact a panacea. So really thyme as a herb of the ancients, as a herb of the, of the old world has still maintained much of its medicinal value and is now just a really commonly used herb. So it's been maintained through all that time. In fact, I'm going to ask the time machine here. Thank you time machine for really holding this space for time. And I'm going to call in on the ancestors from the sundial and ask Papa T to join us. Oh. Papa T! Oh, hi, Yarl. How you doing? Nice to have you. Hey, it's nice to be in time. Oh, thank you for uh, providing this space for the time machine to be here. Yes, it's, it's a very important herb for me. There's no question about it. I even have dreams about it. I know. It brings I mean, courage and it takes away those nightmares. This is one of those herbs that you've been talking about for a long time. I, I have, I have. It, it's, it's one of those interesting herbs that has so much studied around it, but not that much on it. We know a lot of its active ingredients and things and how they work, but because it's such a simple culinary herb, not that many people have actually studied it in a clinical situation. That's certainly being resolved right now. Probably one of my biggest relationships with it, this is back in, oh, maybe 2010, 2011. And of course, we know we're going through this whole transition of the 2012 time. And I wanted to have some herbs that would help us through that period of time. And I was talking to a Cree elder and she was channeling Red Bear. And I asked her, what should we be doing during this era? What are your thoughts? And she said, you're going to dream about a herb tonight. And that's the herb we should cultivate for this. Well, of course, that night I had a whole long dream sequence on time. And that's why the time machine really started. Of course, we started in Alberta and we brought it here and it just loves this Mediterranean environment here to grow. So that's how our time machine originally got together. Mm. Alex, master gardener here, has 
crafted up the most beautiful time machine with the sundial and everything. I've heard that time is actually good for restless sleep and restless nervousness and can help with deeper dreams. It, it definitely is and since I'm a perennial insomniac it becomes fairly significant for me to be able to do that. So my partner Alexander Lupo, she put this together and it's well I haven't had a herbalist come near the area that it hasn't walked up to it immediately go whoa is that ever cool. Right, because it has that kind of that kind of feeling that it's it's yeah. well, it's time immemorial as it would be. Well, and there's so many different kinds here. What do you like? Do you drink time as tea? Do you use it as a spice? I how, drink how it a little bit it? as a tea, and I used to have this housekeeper. You might remember Betty. She used to whenever we had colds and stuff like that, she brew up a, a little bruja as she was. She brew up some things and make with it, but. I use it well traditionally it was used for putrefaction more than almost anything. So they didn't have any refrigerators or things like that in medieval times and especially in the Mediterranean. So they would just pack it all over the lamb and pack it all over the mm. meat to be able to preserve it for a period of time. So I cook most of my meat, most of the chicken, a lot of fish packed with time. So to say we go through a couple kilos a year in a culinary nature is probably an under exaggeration because we put it in everything. It has a nice pungent flavor which has an ever so slight hint of Listerine mm. because the thymol extracted out of this was the original Listerine and that's how it became famous and well you probably used it yourself one of these times for a gargle, antiviral, these things it can really be able to work with that. Yum. But besides working on those things, it brings courage into our bones. It brings our dreams down into a common level. So it's quite a useful thing. So it has its mythical level, it has its metaphorical level, and well, it's a herb of longevity and time. So it will whisk us away to various places. I just love the smell. I mean, it's really pretty incredible. Yeah, a lot of that, you know, has been studied now too, which is like like Listerine as an example was was heavily studied. Uh, thymol, that ingredient, for its ability to support the digestive system, for healing the gums, for having that anti-inflammatory effect. A lot of the the benefits that we know of come from some of those studies in Europe, really showing a profound effects of this plant. Other things I've heard too is that this is really good for the mucous membranes all through the body. So for colitis, for ulcers, for external membranes, but also the gums and all of that. Have, have you ever used it as like a tooth powder or Absolutely. made it into? It, it, it's good for all those kinds of things as you say the mucous membranes and, and that's one of the reasons it's a great you know anti putrid type herb as it were but it just works in that whole mucous membrane to the through the digestive tract. I've certainly used it in the SIBO, mm -hmm. um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. I've used it in irritable bowel syndrome, used it, packed it in the gums when people are getting Infections spongy gums and, and yep. stuff like that. Um, used it that way. But it's just nice as a nice little sippy tea. At mm. first it almost tastes a little too strong. So I don't really want to drink Listerine. It's quite spicy at first. But it, yeah. it, it, you, you get onto it and you really like it. But it really, really adds a nice flavor to meats, mm. and so so they can be working the digestive tract. Hence the culinary use, and and also digestive that way, right? To help Absolutely. digest the meat better or the, the proteins or, in that way. Or the bronchitis, right? Right. You know, when a person's got a cold, I'll, I'll never forget your your sister when when Betty brought her a big mug of thyme tea to drink when she had a flu once, a cold she was drinking. Is this, I don't think I'm ever going to tell her I'm sick because she gives me <laughs> these lectures. Well. I, I, and I personally love the flavor of thyme, so I, do I think too. that's. I mean, it's a good one. It's one that I've used in antiparasitic remedies and mm -hmm. it, uh, as part of a tea blend, especially like you said for bronchitis uh, and for that for that kind of cough that's like an itchy cough, this constricted cough mm -hmm. that needs to like loosen those mucous membranes, get that phlegm moving. And you make it weak enough and then slowly bring it up. It's pretty easy to give as an antiparasitic for kids. Mm -hmm. Most antiparasitics is really kind of gnarly and nasty tasting. Right, but this one. Tastes and pretty this, good. This one's all right, you know. Yeah. You, you bring it up a little bit here. Well, we put it in our parasite blend in Harmonic Arts too, for that reason. It has a nice flavor. It's a lot better than the like garlics and the the, the black walnuts and some of the other uh, kind of more not so nice flavored herbs. But I think it's really interesting to note that Hippocrates used it as one of his twelve most important herbs. Mm. And since he's the father of modern medicine, that would be a thing. Yeah. I mean, Pliny used it. Almost all those medieval people used it um, right. as one of their major things. So you might not think time is important in your life, 
but it might get, save you time and get you to live longer. It might be the herb of longevity for you. That's the irony of it. It's really nice to sit here and just sample so many different varieties of thyme. Each one has just a really powerful and unique flavor. So they're good for so many things. May it be salad dressing, may it be on meat, may it be in some kind of sauce, the ferment, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But what I really like about it is the reaching back in history to understand that it represented courage so much that the the, the ladies would embroider it with a little bee and give it to the knights of the round table or the Lancelot's kind of mm. guy going along to give them courage as they fought for them to be their, you know, their knight in shining armor. And, and along that same line, something I really liked that I was reading was how the Romans put it in their baths as a way of fortifying the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. It's got so much large culinary things. It's so broad in its medicinal application and it's good for our psyche. It's, it's just got all kinds of things that we can use it for. Mm. So that makes it a herb of all time. There you go. And, and really considering all time, the antiseptic properties of this plant was a big reason why it was used for the mummification process in Egypt. In fact, Absolutely. this was part it was of that the, whole it, process. It was this and myrrh, basically. Those right? are the two major ingredients, thyme and myrrh. So if you want something to last for all time, mummify That's, them in time. Yeah, right, okay. right. So so it really preserves things. So mm. I'm going to be eating this for the next, oh, 40, 50, maybe 100 years. I'm not quite sure yet. One of the things I love about thyme is its capacity to really help with my digestion, to help me with gas. And, uh, you know, I also know that it's anti-parasitic, antiviral, antifungal, and really helps with all the antibacterial properties inside of the gut and on the skin, all the mucous membranes. What are your thoughts around, around how this could be used that way? Well, I, I think it really works in those ways to a large degree. And I think it's kind of a communication thing. It's really working mm. on the microbiome in our whole digestive okay. tract. It's working on the ecology right. of our digestive tract. It's working on the ecology of how they communicate. So it's letting it communicate in a larger world and stuff. In fact, I'd have to say that creates coherence among our own bacteria, mm. our own organisms. And our our little microbiome yeah. and our, our external yeah. microbiome too, Absolutely. Right? It works in the skin. Well. It's great for ointments and salves and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It is wound healing in that nature. So it creates, a, but it not only works there, it works on the psyche. That's why it works on nightmares. It works on anxiety. It works on, on all kinds of, you know, little critters. Fighting the demons, the shadow, Absolutely. right? That, that it, stuff. Yeah. It creates that kind of coherence there and mellows us out. I wonder if that's why Hippocrates considered this one of his best herbs. I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. But again, it helps us communicate deeply with our ancestors through the Middle Eastern era, through mm. that middle times coming up to now. Yeah. So it's being a herb that's been around for in time immemorial, and it's still one of the biggest things that's going to help our time on Earth. Therefore, giving us longevity. All right, there you go. That's time. One of those herbs that can be really useful for, I guess, maybe the, the trauma to our tissues, for imbalances in our ecosystem, as an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, as kind of a panacea, an anti-aging supportive herb that brings us back into coherence, that really just supports the overall health, both tasting and enjoying of life. Hmm, a culinary herb that can bring us into coherence. Go figure. It's got to be time for that. All right. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye. So we find time in so many different parts of the world. Like, what are some of the culinary traditions that really love this plant? Well, Greek specifically, of course. Of course. Yeah. Egyptian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And French, right? French cooking oh, is French is very big. Italian, right? it's a very big thing in Italian. Well, that whole Mediterranean mm. diet thing. But it's interesting enough that the one place you'll never find it is in Mexico. I must have gone around to twenty different herb shops, and they didn't have any time mm. for the culinary thing because I was. That's not just tourist grocery. Mexico. That's like no, no, no. Real Mexico. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not just gringo. I'm, I'm with. The, um, <laughs> You're half with the, with the Mexican. <laughs> yeah, I'm with train. a bunch of. Mexican people right. trying to find it. You see it in, in Cajun gumbos and stuff in New England.